flower. I'm just gonna make sure that I'm live here, so excuse me while I double check my computer. I hope you guys are having a wonderful Tuesday. Uh, make sure this is muted too. Wonderful Tuesday. Okay, good. <laughs> I just unmuted it. Uh, today we're gonna make a really fun card. We're gonna create a shaker card with one of the new dies that came out in Waffle Flowers uh, May release. It's the flying butterfly die here. Isn't that awesome? It's a really cool die. And the minute I saw this die, I knew I wanted to create this shaker card. I wanted to create a shaker card where each one of these butterflies was its own individual well that you could fill with different colored um, either sequins or I'm using seed beads today because they are some of the butterflies are pretty small So I'll get more movement with the seed beads because they're also small um, Here, let me show you the card. So this is what we're making today It's a really fun shaker card. You can see how Those seed beads really move around in there So not only am I going to show you how to create this shaker card and how to make all these wells but also share some tips for how to, let's say your shaker contents are a little big, how to get your wells a little bit bigger, not quite doubling up your foam, uh, craft foam big. So that's, I think, a handy tip too. Sometimes you don't want to have this really thick, thick uh, shaker card. So I'll show you how to kind of get it a little bit thicker without doubling up your uh, craft foam. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the camera away from my face and we'll get started. This is kind of a, <laughs> um, I wouldn't say intense, but there's a lot of steps in this just because we're, we're creating a shaker card, which is more intense. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the camera away from my face and down to my work surface and we'll get started. So give me a second here. I remember how to do this, there we go. I'm hoping today that I can do this much smoother than all my other times. It's pretty good, it's still really close. It looks all right on, on camera for you guys, okay. So I have actually, so here's the flying butterflies die, and I also have two pieces of craft, or 110 pound white card stock, so some heavy weight card stock. Um, you wanna start off with two, you can even do more, but I'm gonna just, use two for today because I think this is all I need to get my thickness. Hello, thanks for joining me. All right, let me scoot this up. You also will need something to at, make your dimension and I'm using white craft foam. I don't know how you guys get your craft foam, but I get mine on Amazon. I buy huge sheets. They're like, oh gosh, they're really big. I don't even know how big they are. Probably like 17 by... 12 they're big sheets and then i just cut them down and use them and i save all my scraps too um but this is what we're going to use this is a bit bigger than an a2 card front you can see here my a2 how it's a little bit bigger maybe you can't see yeah you can see it it's a little bit bigger you definitely want to start with something bigger to adjust but you can even use a scrap which is what i did for this card originally but i'm trying to make it as simple for you guys as possible because it's just shaker cards can sometimes be, especially if you haven't made a lot, they can be kind of intimidating. I know my first shaker card, I made at least three wrong before I finally, um, finally got the hang of them. So the first thing I do is I'm going to actually die cut my butterflies out of one of my A2 panels. I'm actually going to double up my A2 panels and do them at once. So this is just going to make sure that I get the alignment right for both of these A2 panels. They need to be they're, I should say the cutout, they're so beautiful, aren't they? The cutout of these butterflies on both of these panels need to be exactly in the same spot. So I'm gonna double up these panels and run them through my die cutting machine at once. It'll probably mean I'll only cut one of these panels cleanly, but that's okay because I will end up making an impression on this panel. So then I can just nestle my die into that impression and then run it through my die cutting machine to get it cut completely through. So I'm gonna stack them up. I'm using my Spellbinders Platinum die cutting machine today, but I will not, this is actually not the only die cutting machine I'll be using. <laughs> I will also be using my cuddle bug because I have to craft, I have to cut craft foam and my favorite way to cut craft foam 
is with my cuddle bug. It just doesn't squash it down as bad. Okay, I'm gonna make sure I get these panels lined up before I cut this. And get my butterflies in place. I'm gonna grab a piece of tape here just to hold it down. I'm using micro pour tape. All right, I'm gonna pick this up and run this through my die cutting machine. My table will be a little squeaky, or my die cutting machine will be squeaky and my table will be shaky. <laughs> Let's see how we did. Hopefully we got the first one cut all the way through, but if we didn't, that's all right. I'll just run that through again. The most important part is I've made an impression on both of my panels of this die. So it looks like to me, the first one cut out cleanly, which is awesome. Yep totally cut clean. We need this piece. We also need kind of the outline that it cuts out, which is right now stuck to my second panel. So I'm going to carefully get that out. I also have all these little butterflies. I'm not going to actually use these uh, negatives, but I would save them because I used them on another card. They're worth saving, I think. Hello, Beth. Hope you're having a good day. We are all done with school at this house. Woohoo! We are on summer break. Okay, it did just like what I hoped it would do, so I'm so happy. Worked perfectly. So I have the impression here, you can see it. It's not cut all the way through, but that's totally okay, because now I'll just run it through again. I'll line up my die. It kind of nestles into those grooves. Actually, I need some of the negative pieces. You see some of these openings here between the butterflies? Let me put it in the center. I need to make sure I save those and don't toss those away. Two are stuck in here, but I need the, these two as well. So let me grab those and I'm just gonna pop them back in for hopefully safe safekeeping. <laughs> hopefully they won't disappear on me, but mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't have a very good track record. Okay, let's line this one back up. There we go. And then I'll grab a piece of tape and hold it in place. And then I'll run that through. And now we'll ha and then we'll have two panels that match perfectly. They're perfectly lined up with that butterfly, flying butterflies die. All right, move the tape and everything else was left on my platform. I'm folding clothes and waiting for my waffle order. Ooh, I ordered all the butterfly items, but they said it would probably, yes, we, we, we sold out of it so quickly. They're awesome, but they will be coming soon. Yeah, I'm really excited about these. I'm folding clothes, geez. I did a one load. That's like one of my least favorite things to do is fold clothes. I think it's because I'll go into my girl's room and put them away. And then I'll notice that all their clothes and their drawers have suddenly become unfolded. <laughs> it's just so like, it seems like such an exercise in futility. Because they don't keep them all folded. They're six and eight. I get after them, but I... Sometimes it seems just as much work getting after them as it is just to just do it myself, which I know is a bad attitude, but that's kind of how I feel sometimes. <laughs> All right, there's the two panels. They match up perfectly. We could even line them up and see how they, whoops, maybe they didn't fall out, how they go together. I hope he washes and put, puts them up and I fold. Oh, that's good. Now, now there, there's a plan, Beth. I'll have my husband put them away. He would do more, but I don't like the way he folds the clothes. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's all right now to chime in that I have problems. I, I would admit it. I'd be the first to admit it. 
He just doesn't fold it the same way I do. And I feel like it takes up more space in the, in the drawers and everything. All right, so now we're ready to cut the craft foam. And again, this panel is a little bit bigger. I'm just gonna kind of center it here in this panel. And like I said before, I'm gonna grab my cuddle bug because I actually don't like cutting craft foam with my Spellbinders Platinum. It just, in my opinion, squishes the craft foam too much. And my cuddle bug does a great job. It just has less pressure, which doesn't make it so great for intricate die cutting, but makes it great for the craft foam. Does anybody still have a cuddle bug like me? I know it's like, old. Hello, Avery. Thanks for joining us. So make sure I get that kind of centered on this. And again, this is a piece of craft foam, white craft foam. So that's going to provide the dimension to create the wells for our shaker card. You have to train them. Oh, see, that's what I'm doing. I've had 32 years. Oh, wow. He's a trained professional, that's awesome. Yeah, maybe I should train them. He's trainable for sure. Admittedly, I just haven't done it. So now it's all die cut out. I don't know if you guys can see. It's all die cut out. I'm gonna pop out the butterflies. Trying to be careful here to keep that um, thin outline piece kind of inside the rest of the craft foam. I think I can do it. But we are about to take a trip. We're about to take our first vacation since the pandemic because we are all vaccinated and we're gonna go to the beach. I'm very excited. So I, but I have to do laundry <laughs> and I'm very behind. So folding is a lot of foldings in my future. I did one load today, but I've got probably like four loads to go before we'll have everything clean and ready for the trip. Almost done. There we go. So everything, I popped out all those butterflies. And again, I'd save these, especially since they line up with your craft phone, your cardstock ones. They'd be really great to use on another card. So totally save them. I always tuck it back in the bag, like the waffle flowers, um, cloud storage bag, they'll pop them in there. Okay, so now that we've got that all cut out and still in place, I'm going to line up the panel with the craft foam cutout. Do you see how I'm lining those two up, getting them? Yeah, I don't think YouTube sends out notifications. I don't think so. Maybe, maybe if you're subscribed, but I keep hearing like stories that they don't, People are subscribed, they even click like the bell to get a notification, but they still don't get them. So now I'm lining, at least this is saved though, at least this live is saved for anybody to see later. So now I've lined it up. Um, I'm going to trace around. So I know where to cut this panel of craft foam down to. So we'll have a perfectly positioned uh, layer of craft foam, die cut layer of craft foam. Apparently I, I can barely talk and trace at the same time. <laughs> there we go, woohoo! See, all traced. I'm just gonna hand cut this out. You can cut craft foam with your paper trimmer, but I'm just gonna hand cut it. And I'm gonna cut just inside of that pencil line. Hello from Texas. Well, 
What's the weather like in Texas? I can't check what the weather like is right now. We had two really cool days here in Arizona. Well, a cool weekend, I should say. We've had several cool days. We had a cool weekend. And it was kind of unexpected, but so appreciated. We were actually cold on Sunday in the evening. Okay, I'm gonna keep cutting this. Just let me know if this is too close of a view for you guys. I'm gonna give it a try. Just gotta make sure I'm, I'm still on camera all the time. I like to have make sure you guys can see really close up to what I'm doing. I think that's one of the, the perks of lives. Really get up in there and ask questions. Okay, so that's all cut. And we're kind of like, oops, I almost threw this precious piece away. We're almost ready to kind of put it together. Can you believe it? This went so much faster than I thought. Well, I kind of, we could make a, maybe a bonus card if I could. Maybe we can try some different. So, um, we, we, like I was saying before, like some of your shaker things, I had a problem last couple of weeks hitting a like button and liking it and then like mysteriously unchecks itself. Oh, that's weird. Hmm. YouTube's weird. YouTube is very weird. I can't keep up with all the, I'm trying to keep up with things, how it's changing and I can't, it's always changing. So like I was saying in the beginning, sometimes when you make your shaker cards, your contents are pretty 88 deep. Oh, well, that's not bad. 80 is not, but that's definitely warm. Sometimes your shaker contents are really thick and um, your, your wells, like if you're just doing the single layer of craft foam, you'll find that, that that's just not enough thickness, not enough depth to allow your shaker contents to shake. Now, of course, you could repeat this process and create a second craft foam layer, but that's probably excessive. Most of the time, your things don't require two layers of craft foam. That's a lot of thickness, a lot of depth. 96 tomorrow, oh, now you're sounding like Arizona. So a uh, one way to get around doing two layers of white craft foam is you can actually kind of add some thickness, add some depth with layers of cardstock. And that's a great way to kind of get some thickness but not have to commit to two layers of white craft foam. Now it's more die cutting for sure. So you have this kind of, you have to pick and choose <laughs> which is the, the bigger evil. Lots of extra thickness and possibly weighting um, wasting some of your craft foam or having to die cut a lot of panels to add some de depth. But I think that's a great way to, especially to make sure those, I have these like gems and they are so thick that they don't want to move around at all. So that's kind of a way you can kind of add some more thickness to your craft foam. So right now I'm gonna do just one layer. The seed beads are not too big. Let me grab my seed beads to show you. So I bought this pack, I think I got it at Joann's. I linked to ones that are pretty, we have humid heat, y'all. we have dryer heat. Yep, dryer heat, exactly. Like open up an oven, that's what Arizona feels like when you step outside. So I got these off of Joann's, they're pretty reasonable price. Um, they have lots of seed beads in here, lots of rainbow color. That's what I wanted to get. I linked a, a Amazon one that was a pretty good equivalent. I couldn't find this one on Joanne's website. But we, they're not too, let me pull some out. They're not too thick. They're just your normal seed beads. They don't have, I don't even know the exact like millimeters they are, but they're, your normal seed bead sides. But they're still a little bit too thick, especially when they get turned, if they get turned on their side instead of lying, lying more flat where the hole's kind of, um, oh gosh, how do I say it? <laughs> you can't see the hole, it's on its side. Um, then it, then the um, craft foam becomes a little too uh, thin. It's not thick enough to allow them to really move. So 
I found by just kind of layering it up the cardstock. Oh, look, how thick is the craft foam? I can find that out. Give me one second, because I think I have the label still. Okay, so this is the craft foam I get. Does it say on here? Oh yeah, right there, two, two millimeters. Oh, so you can, that's possibility too, right? You can look up and get thicker craft foams. This is just the one. I think this is pretty standard. It's pretty similar to, I got it because it's pretty similar to foam adhesive thickness. Pretty much exactly the same. All right, so let's put this together. Start building our shaker card. So I'm gonna grab my card base. And I have a little bit of overhang here. I'm just gonna hand cut it off. Forgot to trim that off before. I have some slightly uneven cardstock panels, so when I fold them up, they don't make a perfect, I got a little bit of overhang. And I'm gonna start by adhering the, I'm gonna start by adhering actually the cardstock to the craft foam. And I'm gonna save this one. This is one I'm calling my, well, let's see, which one looks better? I'll say this one looks a little bit better. So this will be the one I adhere to my craft foam. Let me grab some adhesive. Just get it all over here. And right now the outline is sticking right inside there. I love the butterflies. I love butterflies. I was saying before, like, uh, butterflies are just... Some people really like flowers, and I like flowers too, but I, I will always love butterflies probably a little bit more than flowers. I don't really know why, but that's, that's just the truth. I think they're less intimidating the color. Oh, those are great. The Oversized Grace and Kindness, that's a great set. All right. I think that's thoroughly covered. I ordered, oops, let me see. I lost it. Oh no. How do I get bring up the comments again? Okay, I ordered the pinking heart on your recognition. I'm going to, to give it a go. Good, oh, the pinking heart's so cute. I love that one. Is that, that's the cardstock or the, um, the cross stitch one, I love that one. That's really fun, I like, like I was saying in the couple lives that I've done with that, is I like the cross stitch. It's just a different way of making cards. It's nice to kind of sit down for once and make your card instead of always, I shouldn't say, sit, being able to sit down in front of your TV, away from your crafting space is sometimes nice. That's what I like about it. All right. So I stuck my cardstock, one of my cardstock panels on to my craft foam. Now I'm ready to go ahead and adhere it onto my card base. So just adding liquid glue everywhere. Again, all over the place. Trying to be careful to not get it anywhere too close to the edge inside these wells. Sometimes it will squish out when you would stick it down and you might have a sticky spot that your, your shaker contents will stick to. There is a way to fix it, but I'm trying to avoid it altogether. You can fix it with a little bit, looks like I did it right there. You can fix it a little bit with um, uh, anti-static powder. Oh yeah, you'll figure it out. It's pretty simple. I've never really cross-stitched before either. <laughs> I'm not a cross-stitcher. I don't do it right. But I think as, as long as, you know, nobody's really looking in the back, I don't think you can really tell that I'm a, a huge novice. 
I did do embroidery in college, but I didn't really ever get into cross stitch. Okay, I'm gonna stick that down and I'm gonna weight it down a little bit with one of my plates from my die cutting machine while that dries a little bit. So let me put that aside. Gotta make a, gotta make a spot for it to go. <laughs> and we're gonna move on to finishing our top for this. Oh, thanks, Beth. <laughs> Well, it like, should give you some confidence at least. I don't think you have to be a really good cross stitcher. And the holes are pretty big that you don't even have to mess around with the floss. I always call it thread. I think the correct term is floss. You can use, use all six strands. It's probably a little bit easier if you take, take it down to five strands, but I hate having to pull my, separate my strands. I hate that. I don't want to mess around with that at all. So I don't ever do it. All right, I'm grabbing some of my negative pieces, popping them back in, into the die cut here. Hopefully I did not lose that little one. Oh, I see it, I see it. Yay, I didn't lose it. That's the worst when you lose one, you have to die cut the whole thing all over again. Okay, so I have a sheet of acetate. And I have an acetate hack. So if you guys save your packaging from your stamping products, you can definitely use that. But I don't always like to use, I don't, I don't like to separate my acetate from my stamp sets. So what I like to use, there's packaging, you can definitely use packaging material, but I make so many shaker cards, I need to be able to buy acetate. Now acetate can be kind of expensive, or at least I think it is, but I found a cheaper alternative. Let me grab it here, because it's off camera. So what, whoops, as I fall to the table. It would be very, that's a good suggestion, it would be. I'm making it a birthday card, but it definitely could be a sympathy card too with different colors. So what I'm using for acetate is I found this on Amazon. This is basically, it's called projector transparency film. This is kind of like what teachers use for, or what you would print on to, to make, um, there's not slides, but you know, sheets that you would use on a projector this is old school, <laughs> but I found this is like a hundred. I think this is a hundred count, a hundred sheets. That's what you use, Terry? Awesome. Yeah, this is what I use because it's really reasonable price. I mean, I'm never going to run out. Look at this. This is a hundred sheets. Now it's not super duper thick. I wouldn't like be constructing like boxes and things out of this, but for shaker cards, which is like 99% of what I make with acetate, this works great. I'll hold it up one more time so you can see. Again, I got it on Amazon. Ugh, I can't remember what I paid for it, but I know per price per sheet because that's what I, <laughs> that's what gets me every time. What is it per sheet? I need to know is really reasonable. Like I think it was like $20 and this was like a hundred count. Yeah, this is a great thing to use instead. And you can die cut it. So I have a piece here that I've trimmed down to an A2 panel. And I'm gonna now adhere it to the back side of this. Oops, and I lost one of my negatives. That's okay, I'll pop him in later. Keep that aside. All right, let me put this aside. And let's start adding, I lost another one. That's all right. You know, I'm getting a little scared that my negatives are gonna pop out and I don't wanna get glue somewhere I don't want it. So I'm just gonna put them aside for a second. I mean, I am gonna tape this, this in though. Just to use a piece of micropore tape just to kind of hold the outline in the net, in the frame and then I'll start gluing this. 
because the frame is really spindly and hard to handle, um, but it's a lot easier to work with when it's in the rest of the panel. So that's why I want to keep them together. So I'm going to glue all over this. Everywhere. It's nice that this has a nozzle. I'm using barely art glue, but lots of glues would work for this. But a fine um, nozzle is definitely something you need to get this uh, thin outline on the butterflies. All right. Almost there. And I am going to kind of tap off the excess glue. It's kind of my new favorite thing to do. Especially since I'm going to glue this on acetate and if any glue kind of squirts out, you're really going to see it. So I'm going to tap it off. Oops. Let's see what I did there. Okay, let me get a piece of scrap paper. Got it underneath my table here. That looks big enough. All right. Oh, good. They had a special. Oh, that's good. Tap it off. I hope you like it. I really do like it. There we go. So I got rid of some of the excess glue. Grabbed a little bonus hair. Ew. Okay. A couple hairs. That's what I get for pulling the scrap out of my trash. <laughs> All right, great. Now I'm gonna center this and stick this down. There we go, remove my tape carefully. I don't wanna pop that out outline out or pull that outline out. Great. Okay, now we just have those little negative pieces that we gotta get in there. Why do I have all this hair in my trash? Why? <laughs> it's probably cat hair. I probably picked up something off the floor that had cat hair. Is any of you cat owners out there like me? I have a blue cream Persian and a exotic. She's orange and white. And my girls are now just getting to the age where uh, they really appreciate them. At the regular size, the bare refill with the nozzle. Oh, great. Yes, I have the bare refill too. I love that you can refill them. I love that. It's such a great way to be, um, to not waste so much. Hope you guys can hear me today. The bar is kind of like my stand is right in front of my mouth and I feel like I'm talking right into the bar. Okay, that's done. So I'm gonna put another weight on this and let that dry while we make our sentiment. Willie, our orange tabby, 23 years old in September. Oh, Willie. He's, a, he's an old guy. Our cats are Bijou and Elodie. Our blue cream is Bijou and our um, orange um, exotic is. I have four grand kitties, aww. My girls want their own kitties so bad. Where did my needle go? Okay, here it is. I just, I'm not sure if I'm quite ready to take on <laughs> two more cats. We've had our cats before the girls were born and they kind of, then, for the most part, they haven't really paid too much attention to them. And now they're really enjoying them. They're, they're six and eight now, my girls are, and they're really enjoying petting them and cuddling up with them. I think I'm gonna have to zoom out. All right, let me adjust my camera here. They 
didn't want to, but I feel like you guys are way too close up for this. Hey, Dana. Oh gosh, can I do this? All right, that's better. Tighten this and they'll be ready to go. Okay, so I'm gonna stamp, create a really simple sentiment with the uh, label maker sentiment set. This also came out. They're all spoiled. Sh Willie thinks he's half dog. <laughs> we have a Chihuahua and a Palm Yorkie. Oh, Bijou, my, she was my first kitty. And I, I got her when I was living with my parents and we had a Chow Chow. And Bijou and the Chow Chow got along so well. They were like best friends. But Elodie, I got her when I moved out, so she's never been around other dogs, and she does not like dogs at all. <laughs> she's just scared of them. Elodie's a big chicken, and Bijou is a, or B, we always call her Bijou for short. Bijou is, um, she's feisty. <laughs> all right, let's see. We're going to stick this down. So I love this set because I can stamp a whole bunch of sentiments at once. I'm gonna do them in black because that's, I like black, I like doing them in black. That's just, I know I'm gonna use those the most. So pick it up here with my Misty. I could use one of the ones I've already made, but I think I've used the one and only birthday one already. So I'm gonna stamp it again. So let me ink this up, I'm gonna use VersaFine. And this guy is gonna really need to get inked up. That's a big solid stamp. That's awesome. Ages of your girls. Old enough to, to lot stuff themselves, but not so in this good list. Yes. All right, that's probably good enough for a first coat. Even though VersaFine, which does pretty much always does a really good job even with just one stamping, I'm probably gonna stamp this twice. So I'm gonna make sure, really make sure that my paper's in the corner. Fold it over. And this is where I wish I had one of those tools that everybody tells me I need to get. <laughs> which is to press oh, that, you know, kind of rubbing pressure thing. I do really need one of those. I need to make one for myself. Give it a go. Does anybody have one out there? One of those, I don't even know what they're called. It's like a tool that you use to kind of press on your Misty. So you don't have to brute, use brute force like I do. Okay, I'll peel this off. So there's one coat. Time to do it again. Our youngest is 26 years. We have three daughters and two sons. Two sons-in-laws, empty nesters now for fur babies. Yeah, my girls are still little. They're really fun age, I love them a lot. Dry eraser, that's what I need. I need a dry eraser, yeah. Thank you, Beth. But this year we did homeschool and I love having them home. I love that, but I admittedly did not love doing homeschool. <laughs> Didn't like doing the virtual school. That was, it was super time consuming. I couldn't, I can't imagine. It was hard to get anything done. But they, they're going back to school in the fall, which is good because teachers do a much better job than I do. <laughs> Things might get back to normal a little bit. Ooh, still looks good, but I'm gonna do one more coat. We're getting there. This is such a solid stamp. I mean, it's basically a giant every second as it goes by. So I know, so fast. It already feels so fast. I look at the baby pictures and I know they're still little, but I look back at their baby pictures and I think, oh my gosh, it doesn't feel that long ago, but look at how much, it almost feels like they're different people. 
feels like I had, I had at one time had a baby. Don't know what happened to that baby. And now I have kids. I love this set. I do too. I love it. I love these kind of sentiments. I love them. I, they're, they, they're the easiest sentiment, the easiest type of sentiments to work into your card design. And if you like this set, we have some cool stuff coming in June. Okay. Don't blink. I really am trying not to. That's why I liked having them home. I felt like I got a, some more time with them. And I love having them around. I just don't like doing school. <laughs> I'm so bad. And the worst part is, you guys, the worst part is, is I was a teacher. I was a teacher. Before I started doing crafting, I was a special education teacher. I loved it in that setting, but it's so different when you get your own kids. Oh my gosh, I can't, I'm not even ready to think that far ahead, Beth. I'm not ready for that. <laughs> okay, so I guess I'm doing it one more time, even though it does look pretty good. I don't know why I'm doing it one more time, but I am. They'll be extra dark. Make sure we're in the corner, because I'd hate to mess it up at this last part. Crying. <laughs> Definitely crying. Of course, I'll be crying too when I send them to school back on <laughs> in the fall, even though I don't I don't want to do homeschool again. <laughs> I'll know I'll be crying then just to just to not have you know, we go from having them around all the time and then all of a sudden, you know, they won't be around me all the time. So this has been a an adjustment just me going to the store has been an adjustment for everybody to get used to you know mommy not being there for you know maybe an hour because <laughs> we've been together the whole time for over a year and a half all right I think that looks pretty good I'm gonna give it a second here to dry before I die cut it plus I have everything all my plates here holding my things together <laughs> that's true though I liked teaching in the school uh, but my own kids uh, they are just my own kids for, uh, uh, how do I say this <laughs> they, they know how to get me more frustrated they know how they just sometimes will frustrate me more and they don't listen your own kids don't listen as well as um, you know strangers kids <laughs> Others, kids, that's probably a better way to say it. Okay. So that's it. I got a little goober on there. All right. So everything's dry. Look at that. It looks so clean cut, right? It looks like a machine made this. So cool. Look at our wells. Love it. Okay, I'm going to die cut this now. Push your buttons, right? Yep, you know how to push my buttons. All right, let's line this die up. Yeah, it looks good. I'm gonna use a couple pieces of tape to hold it in place. And I'll run it through my die cutting machine. And we'll get all these sentiments. You know, I think I just did do this recently a second time. Oh, well, we'll do it again. I'm going to have a lot of these sentiments. <laughs> I'm thinking, wait a minute. I think I did just do this in a video. But oh, well, we'll have more. Let's see if I can pull this off. And there they all are. Look at them. 
them. We got a couple stuck here, but I'll get those out. Like a word, is it a word sentiment? Like a word cutout sentiment? Those are so cool. Die, die machine, die cutting is cool. It's just cool. I started card making with a Cricut and now I never use my Cricut because die cutting is much cooler. <laughs> I like die cutting a lot better. It's less of a hassle too. All right. Let's fill this shaker card. So what one thing you can do, if you know you have like sticky edges inside, you can take your anti-static bag and kind of press it in here a little bit to add a little bit of that powder to kind of help to prevent, to kind of take away some of that stick if you have any excess glue squishing out. He calls them pretty sentiments. <laughs> Um, I think I'm good. You do want to be careful though and not get too much of that powder in your wells because then it actually makes your your shaker sh like um, cloudy, kind of powdery. I love die cutting. I love it. It's cool. All right, let's fill our wells up, huh? Let's do the fun part. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing great on time. All right, so I used red. Let's see, these are kind of like, let's pull this over. So I used red. I didn't use this orange because I thought it was too bright, but maybe I'll use it this time. Do something a little different. And yellow. Yeah, die cutting is the best, right? It's just so cool. Use that guy. I'm using a little bit different colors for it. And I have a Cricut and a silhouette. I don't use either for cards. You're right. I don't use them for cards either. I first started using my Cricut for cards, but um, I quickly decided I didn't like I that die cutting was better. Let's see. I'm picking different colors this time just because, I don't know. I want to try something a little different. Here's the original. Just a little bit different. Going more orange than, this, than I did that time. All right, so there are actually, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I need eight colors. Just want to double check before I said that. We need a green. I'm doing a rainbow, of course. Two blues. Let's do that one there. All right, there's our rainbow. I like it. Now it's time to fill. This time I think I'm gonna start with pink. Just fill it up. Try to keep everything like a one layer. I wonder if I should zoom back down again now. Let's zoom back down a little bit. Wait, I can think I can do it. <gasps> I gotta remember, I can't get my platforms mixed up. I can zoom in here on this one. All right, let's do our red. And this one, ooh, isn't that red pretty? Ah! I'm amazed too by how little, how little of a dent I'm making in these. You don't really need a lot of seed beads to fill these guys up. I might do a little bit more pink in that one though. Okay, he's small and I'm afraid I'm gonna get it everywhere. So I'm gonna grab this guy, pour some in here. Probably should have did this earlier. Hopefully, whoop, hopefully I can be a little bit more precise. That's how my sister got me into card making. She asked me to buy her Gemini, oops. because she wanted the limited edition of Tally Purple one. They say I'm deep into the caverns. Yes, you're, if you're watching this, you're in the rabbit hole for sure. <laughs> it's a good rabbit hole. It's nice in here. Yep, I started with my Cricut and I started making cards, and then I realized that Cricut's really no good for, now this is back in the day, it was no good for making sentiments. So that's when I discovered stamping 
again because I had been I had stamped a long time ago when I was a kid, but I kind of stopped and went on to scrapbooking. And then once I discovered stamping, I discovered all of the awesome. Oh no! Oh no! Well, real life it doesn't actually wasn't that bad. Did I get any any? I got one in here. That's when I discovered all the awesome stamp companies. And I was like, oh my gosh, stamping has changed. And I was sucked in. What a mess. Hello from Puerto Rico. Oh, geez. How did I do that? I don't know. All right. Now on to yellow. This is so fun because this one really starts to get colorful. It was pretty before, but just white, you know, <laughs> very boring. Now we're really adding a lot more fun to it. I think I'm going to like this one better than my first one. I just kind of like these colors a little bit more. All right, tweezers. I'm going to need you. I want them really full, so I'm going to fill them up probably more than I should. But I, that's all our color is coming from these beads, so I really want to get a fair amount. Keep checking if I missed any of her. I have my own craft room now. Woohoo! Good for you, Beth. I'm still in the dining room. I used to have my own craft room, but once, once I had babies, um, I just... The only time I could craft is kind of like craft and watch them. So I had to move out to the living room or to the dining room. Our living room, dining room is kind of all together. Someday I'll have my craft room again. But I enjoy kind of being out here with everybody. Though for lives, it's a particular odd situation because <laughs> I have to make everybody in my house go into their rooms for my lives so they're not noisy. <laughs> but everybody knows the drill now, so... We've adjusted. Plus, now with everybody having tablets and everything, it's really not much of a hardship. Oh my gosh, I love how pretty this is. These colors look so good. I think I picked the pearlier beads last time. This time I kind of picked the more vibrant ones. And I think I'm liking these vibrant ones better. Well, you are very full. But we'll keep you that way. I'm thinking I need to do a little bit more in the red after... Oh, geez. After I spill them everywhere. But my youngest is off to college. I was counting her room. <laughs> I would be doing the same thing. Are you going in there and taking measurements? <laughs> oh, hi, Tiffany. You caught, you, you're at the fun part. We're filling the shaker card. Isn't this the fun part? This is the part that everybody, I, this is the part I look forward to the most. I love filling the shaker card. I love all these little sparkly things. Oh my gosh. I like this color so much better. And what did I use before? I must have used this color. It looks so different now. Hmm. All right, we got to get that guy. He's Oh, I got a green one on here. He's standing out like a sore thumb. Okay, I think I just need a little bit more red, maybe a little bit more yellow, and then we're done. I never tried seed beads before. Do they stick less than sequins? Um, I actually think they do stick a little bit less. But they're a little bit thicker than sequins, so that's the trickier part with seed beads. You have to kind of do those accommodations by adding, you know, um, like we did a layer of, cra of cardstock. That's, I think, the downfall. A little bit more yellow. 
So these are gonna be pretty full and not so shaky, <laughs> I guess, because I'm filling them pretty, I'm, I'm filling them too much, I know, but I can't help it. I just wanna see them with lots of color. Oh, good. All right, that's done. I love it. Guys, do you see the difference? I like this one so much better. Isn't that funny? I mean, granted, I used a slightly bit different beads, but I like this one so much better. Why? Why? All right, let's glue this on. Let's seal it up. I did a card like this one time for Christmas and I did, um, what did I do? What are they called? Light bulbs. So the light bulbs were the shakers. And that was a fun card too. So definitely, this doesn't have to be just used for this. All right. Got a lot of liquid glue on here. Just wanna make sure. Get a good hold. Okay, that's done. Find my needle. Cap it off. And then I'm gonna put my one of my plates again on top just to let it have a little bit of weight while it sets up. But like that looks like a really good thickness. I put that weight on top and I could see them instantly kind of shake around, move around in there. So I know I've got good movement on that. So that's good, I'm happy. I hate when I make a shaker card and they don't move, the beads don't move around very much. I'm like that's no fun. Okay, so while we finish, so that finishes up, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Let's grab our birthday sentiment, and I think I want to add a little bit of dimension to that. I didn't do it the first card I made, but this one I think I want to. I think I want to pop it up a little bit, but I don't want to use craft foam. Well, do I want to use craft foam? I got these leftover strips. Let's just use these leftover strips. I was going to use leftover cardstock, but I'm just going to use strips instead. Oh, thanks, Beth. So fun. Take that off. All right, let's glue that down. These are just left over from the panel that I made in the beginning. I trimmed down. All right, and we're on home stretch. Just hit four o'clock. See, are we dry? Pretty dry. Look at them. I love it. I love how this one turned out. Nothing like being able to do a card a second time over <laughs> and perfect it, right? All right. Where did I put this before? Kind of right in here. I'll do that again. Yeah, I love the brighter colors. What a difference. What a difference. And I think the fact that I, I started with pink, which I should have done before, but I thought, I was thinking, I don't want to see, I was thinking before, I didn't want red and red and green next to each other, but I like the red and green next to each other. So 
so it shows what I know. <laughs> Plus, I didn't use, like, red. I used a, I, what I thought was more pinky, but it looks more mauve -y than dark pink. But so fun. Look at that. Love how it turned out. Definitely could make this card without seed beads. Um, you could make it with uh, sequins, colored sequins if you want. But some of those little butterflies are the tricky. They're the tricky ones. You're not going to get much movement. But you can just pop them in there for color. Love it. And this is going to be such a fun birthday card, I think. The recipient's going to be like, oh, look at all of that. They'll be excited. All right, I'm going to turn the camera away from my work spot, and we'll finish up. Hold on one second. It's going to go black for a second. Ooh, thank you, guys. I'm so glad you liked it. That's a fun card. And it wasn't too bad. I was afraid making that one a little bit. <laughs> I was a little afraid that it was going to be hard. Because the first time I made it, I didn't know what I was doing, and I didn't do it right. But then I sat down and thought about it. Okay, now I know what I want to make. How can I make it better? And I'm very happy with how it turned out. There it is. All done. Thank you so much, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Just at least the nice thing about this video at least shows you how to make a shaker card with that flying butterfly set. And I hope that'll be helpful for everybody. Thank you so much for uh, watching this live and commenting. I love it. I have this on pre-order and I can't wait. Yeah, it's going to be back soon. It will be back soon. Uh, the butterfly um, released it wonderful. So it's, it sold out much quicker than we expected. Thank you guys so much. Um, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and I won't see you in another live until June. Ooh, bye everyone. Thank you.